I realized I made a mistake and in today's video I'm going to be retuning the motor using the Prius inverter. I don't think I tuned it right and when I accelerate the motor sometimes I can hear like a noise uh, which I thought was a parking pole. Unfortunately I found the lock brake is beginning to creep in and you can hear clanking of the lock brake against the gear. Effectively later on I took the parking pole off and I figured out that it was not that. I think the tuning was not right. So in this video I'm going to try to actually finish FOC tuning and actually build for myself a slightly different power supply. If you're new to the channel, I have a crazy idea of building my own electric car. I've decided to start from building a drivetrain, motor and inverter. I'm using Toyota Prius inverter with the open inverter board and Toyota Prius gearbox as my electric motor. The gearbox has two motors inside. MG2 is a bigger one and MG1 is a smaller one. It's not the most highly powered motors, but widely available and rather cheap. To get the motor working, first I need to perform the tuning. This tuning is called FOC tuning. Our power supply will be made out of these modules and I think I'm going to use three or four of those. So I want to just test to see if they actually work. As it looks like I can power them on now, I wanted to make them into a single unit. And of course there's nothing that gaffer tape cannot fix. I started from tying them all together into one single unit, of course using gaffer tape. To finish off, I measured the voltage of each individual module and all of them together. That should give me 120 volts. As a last step, I soldered in positive and negative terminal to my newly created power supply, hoping it's not going to blow up when I connect it for the first time. Top cover goes on first and followed by the connection of the inverter capacitor. I am connecting high voltage wires on the same spot where Toyota designed it. I made this possible by fitting a link on the DC to DC converter side through to the high voltage connection. And to finish off I needed to fit a motor cable with three phases and the top protective cover with interlocks. Well, add from the past connecting cables for the inverter, let's have a look at the principles of oriented control and why do we need it in our application. Field oriented control will allow us to apply maximum torque at the required position. The way this is achieved is the torque vector is always 90 degrees against the position of the rotor. While doing the tuning we will need to adjust the sink offs value in degrees and the tuning process will start from a very low value in degrees from zero and we will apply manual ID current which will result in the motor moving. As we increase sink offs value more and more the current will be needed higher and higher to get the motor moving. And eventually we will reach the point where a very high amount of current will not result in a motor movement. As we increase sink offs further, we will find that motor will start moving in the opposite direction. And this is an indication that we reached the required position. I'm starting inverter in manual mode. It would load the parameters that I had before. So in this case we will start from sink offs value as zero 
and we will start adjusting manual ID value. So I enter 3 amps manual ID and as you can see, as expected, the motor starts to turn. So we go back to zero and now we can start increasing our sinkholes value to get to the point where we uh, basically will have no more movements. So I know roughly I can go, let's say, about to 8000 or even let's go 10,000. Sinkholes value and I'm going to jump in to the manual ID. So let's start from 5. So we have a minor movement, so clearly that's not the value we want. So I'm going back to parameters and now I can jump, um, let's say, to 15 and go to spot values and put, now I want to put manual ID like 20 straight away. It's probably need more current to start inverter moving and we can see there is a small movement of the motor. So I think the right value would be around about between 18,000 and 20,000. However, the, the issue is because my power supply cannot supply sufficient current. It's very difficult for me to do the fine adjustment. So just for giggles, I will try um, 20,000. So 20,000. So in theory, we should see no movement at all and we don't see the movement. Let's go for 90. I'm now getting getting some vibration. Let's go to 100. Yeah, now now it's get quite considerable vibration. And now I'm going to zero. So this is the indication that this is the value we require. But what, what I'm still not sure about is that manual ID at 0 0.1 um, does give you still a um, slight movement. So which is basically an indication that we are close. Okay, let's just give it a try. Increase it to 20,200. So no further, let's go for 100. Yeah, we got similar, yeah, there's a quite considerable vibration, so zero. But still movement if I do manual ID at 0 0.1, so... As expected, manual IQ three gives us a movement counterclockwise and in theory negative should give us clockwise movement but it doesn't i think i will store this value so i will need to stop the inverter stop the inverter inverter halt it and now we can say save parameters to flash and the message parameters stored and we get CRC so we have a sink of 20,200 <laughs>so I finished the tuning and now I would like to test to see how it works with the throttle It sounds pretty smooth, isn't it? Almost there. I think maybe needs a bit more tweaking. 